Amy, come on. Good, we're good. Love you, buddy. Come on. Oh, let me, let me, as you're coming here, one other thing about Robert. A few years before Robert passed, I went in. We had a minister's meeting, and he asked the ministers to come in. And when I walked into that hospital room, there was no doubt he was on the edge of death. But see, again, Robert, the Bible says you ask for prayer. And he asked for the elders of the church of the team of prayer people he had prayed with. And they came in that day, and I'm sure many other people prayed for him. But when I looked at him, if you'd said, Brian, what do you think? I'd say, he's gone. But see, God didn't ask us what we think. God asked us to pray in faith. So we laid our hands on him and prayed in faith, and he rallied. And I don't know how many more years, probably four or five at least, that he, that he lived after that. So see, that's an example of faith. Jamie? You're such a fun guy. We love, and you're, you're learning all the gizmos at the back, right? I got to treat you good. Anybody that knows the gizmos, we have to treat well. Uh, well, we can move you up here if you want. Thank you, sir. Look down. <laughs> I'd rather look up. Hi, everybody. My name's Jamie. Use the mic up like that. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. My name's Jamie. Um, I'm an Army brat. Uh, a little bit closer. <laughs> I'm nervous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> never thought I'd be in this position, but here I am. Uh, I love it, but I'm nervous. So let's, let's, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to remember your phone call. <laughs> uh, yes, how did I get here? Um, I got here last August. I um, I didn't know anybody in Peterborough. We've been here five years, working, living, working, living, raising your kids. Uh, me, my wife, and my daughter. My son's moved away. Um, uh, so I, I didn't know anybody, so I went to the music festival every Saturday and Wednesday. And I sat at the same bench all the time. Yeah, yeah, I, I met a lot of wonderful people, uh, homeless people, rich people, just people of all sorts. And uh, I just loved sitting there on that same bench talking to everybody. Uh, I met a few few good people, a few ruffians like Rick. <laughs> um, and and it, just, it just went from there. Um, I, I was thinking the other day after Pastor Linda called... Um, you know, I, I sat there because, like I said, I had no friend, didn't know anybody, but I, I think I was waiting for something now that I look back because at the end of all this, um, they had a five-day gospel music festival, and I stayed for that as well. Um, and uh, a young lady approached me and asked me if I wanted a Bible and if she could pray for me. And I said, sure. If you've got enough time, you can pray for me because uh, it'll take a while. Um, but anyway, um, she did, and, and I loved it. Um, I was raised Catholic, got away as a, as a young teenager, uh, was rebelling and drinking quite a bit. Um, uh, had my kids um, quit drinking because of my kids. My son seen me drunk once, and I was beat up by a fellow Newfie of Ron's. <laughs> he doesn't know him, but I say that because he was a Newfie fella. Him and his brother beat me to a pulp. But anyway, um, my young son seen, seen that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that was the end of it. I was 32 years old and didn't want my kids to see that, any of my kids to see that. Um, so 23 years ago, I quit drinking. Um, I was never a big druggie. I got into the marijuana. Um, I still smoke marijuana. Um, I don't smoke as much as I used to, but I, I still do. Uh, the doctors ask me if I do it for pain. I say no. I've been in pain all my life. I've smoked it all my life. I said, but um, maybe that's why I've smoked it, to deal with it. I have no idea. But anyway, that's, a, that's another long story. Um, so anyway, getting back to the, to the music festival, a young lady, Jen, she... she um, she prayed for me and gave me a Bible, Rick and I, and uh, I just, I loved it. Uh, I, I think I surrendered there on the spot. 
that's why I went back to the Catholic thing. It was because uh, I bounced around and I prayed. And, you know, you get in trouble with the law. And uh, why, Lord, pray for, you know, forgiveness and all this stuff. And then get away from it again and get it back into it. It's a vicious circle. Um, but this, this uh, like I said, I was in a good spot when I, when I, when I found the Lord. Um, I surrendered. I uh, was asked if I wanted to be baptized, and I said no. I said I was baptized when I was young. Um, and I learned from Pastor Brian um, in one of his services why we have... A and the movie Jesus Revolution as well. Um, you know, why we're baptized and stuff like that. And uh, I was having some shame. Um, I keep seeing this old man. Um, we pushed down and stole his pizza one night because we were drinking and carrying on. And I looked back at this gentleman and he was crying. I don't know if he was crying or if it was the rain, but he looked like he was crying and he was hurt from 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 greed and stupidity. Um, so I had some shame, and, and when he mentioned, uh, uh, you know, leaving all that stuff, the reasons for being baptized, I thought, hey, that's me. I got to do it. I got to go, and uh, I left a lot of crap in that pool. Yeah, I did. I left a lot of crap in that pool, I'll tell you. But uh, I went to Elam Church Thursday night to have my baptismal done, and the, 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 the tank was broken. And I thought, oh, man, what are we going to do? And all my friends here at this church, from this church, were there, and they all chipped in and, and got me baptized in the, uh, the Holiday Inn pool. It was epic. It was great. Um, the Holy Spirit was there. I, I never spoke in tongues in my life, and I spoke, I prayed in tongues that night. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a marvelous uh, feeling. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm, I want to be here. I pray to the God. I don't know how to pray very well. I do my best. Um, I pray for guidance all the time because I need guidance and I need, I'm learning. I, I, I'm not, uh, I say it wrong. I'm not as fruitful as you people. I say I'm not as saturated in God as you people. But I, I'm, I'm getting there. And, and it's going to take a long time. Uh, I'm knee deep. I'm knee deep. Knee deep, knee deep. Where's Amy? You just reminded me. She's scared of frogs. Just knee deep, knee deep, you know? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I, I, like I said, I, got, I was at the park, and, uh, and a young lady named Jen, she's from one of the outreach centers. I haven't seen her since. Um, I hope to see her soon at some one of these gatherings or touching Toronto, wherever. It doesn't matter where, because uh, I'd like to talk to her and thank her. And uh, um, and what what have I what have I learned? I've learned so much. And I, I started last August uh, coming here to church, and um, I love it. Uh, everybody talks of the Spirit when you come in this in this in this building, and I feel it all the time. The first two times I was here, I've been to so many uh, 9/11 uh, or not 9/11 uh, uh, Memorial Day, Remembrance Day. Um, ceremonies being an army brat and the one that we had here I cried it was the first time I ever cried at a rem uh, remembrance day ceremony and I asked so I said that to Ron and Ron said that's the spirit buddy he said it's you know get used to it kind of thing and uh, so a couple of weeks later I, I cried again I, uh, we were praying um, and uh, I don't remember ever having a wonderful feeling like that it was a cry, it was sad, but it was good. It was a good cry. Um, what I've learned since I've came here is that I love disciples of the city. I love going out with the, with the people and, and helping other people. Um, my mom and dad were, uh, were foster parents. My mom, my real mom and dad were foster parents of over 200 little infant babies, uh, sexually abused girls, uh, Boys, heroin addict kids, uh, prostitute, 11 year olds, all kinds of garbage. And um, I just like to be nice and, and, and help people as much as I can. I can't help them as much as my mom and dad did, but um, I try. Um, but, but the disciples of this city is, is a way for me to do that. Um, we saved a fella last Thursday. 
uh, he was he was lost. Um, and one of the things he said, we asked him if we could pray for him, and what would you like to be prayed for? And he said, a shame. I said, buddy, I got I got some stories for you. So I, we talked after they went to get him a Bible, and um, I was shaken. Must be 25 years of withdrawal. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we saved this fella, and, and uh, he's going to come to church. We gave him a Bible. He wanted to read the Bible a bit before he started coming back to church. Um, but uh, it, was, it was a great feeling. It, it was just awesome. The people aren't here. They, they belong to Elam Church, I guess, Leanne and, and Simon, two wonderful people that I met. Um, so, yeah, uh, here I am. I love it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm still on the straight path. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know what else to say. That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So thank you all, guys. I appreciate your, uh, your love and your caring. And uh, You're getting active? I am, yes. And that's your victory is inactive? Yeah. You're serving? You're serving here? You're doing, I think, touching Toronto? Were you touching yeah. Toronto? Yeah. It's really encouraging for us, some of you well, great guys. You know that that one gentleman that walked in on crutches or on canes, and I hugged him and I cried with him because um, like I have back issues and hope to be out of pain, and he walked out of there carrying his canes. You know that's just one little story. You know, so I hope to see more of it. I'm sure I will. Yeah, yeah. You will, and you're part of it. Yes. We're glad you're part of our family. Hallelujah. My fun is uh, now going to church. Yeah. Sundays twice, Tuesday nights in Oshawa, not yeah. church, but yeah. Yeah. everything church, Worship. everything yeah. church, God. You know, God's great, and thanks again. You're going the right direction. Yeah. Amen. The only thing is, I'm a, I, the only thing you did wrong, Jamie, is you've got me a little afraid to bring Ron up. <laughs> However, we all kind of knew because... Ron, we know Ron. He's 3D. He's 3D, maybe 4D or 5D. He's coming up whether I'm in, inviting him or not. So <laughs> come on, Ron. <laughs> well, how do I top that? Like, that's, that's I'm R rated. Well, Pastor Brian, thank you for ask, answering a two and a half year old question that I had. I was wondering why I fit in here so good. Now I know I'm a little bit nuts. <laughs> so uh, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, God works all things for our good. Makes no difference what it is. One of the worst time in my life was um, when my son was angry with me. I was a true epitome of a prodigal son. I was totally doing everything against what God had called me to do and the path that he had set before me. And I did totally everything to go against that. So prodigal son is what you could call me. But my son was angry with me. And my son was so angry with me, he came home one day from work and threw a rock through my window. Grabbed me and fought me for about five minutes, threw me up against the wall. Finally, when he understood that I wasn't going to fight him, he left. I was pretty shaken. So I walked up on my deck, and as I was going, I was talking to myself. What did I ever do? What did I ever do but love my son for him to treat me this way? And in an instant, just like that, the Lord spoke to me. He goes, Ron, what did I ever do to you other than love you for you to treat me this way? Other than send my son to die for you? What did I do to you? Needless to say, that was a wake-up call that I needed. It was a good slap upside the head. And I thank the Lord for it. That was the first step for me to come to Selwyn Church. A little while later... I was looking for a church, and I was listening to a program on Life Radio Station. And it comes on 1030 on Saturdays. It's called Culture at a Crossroads. And they were interviewing a guy there um, that owned a hockey team in Germany. 
you know him. Well, I didn't. But the interviewer was asking him a question. How has the hockey industry and owning this team affected your faith? He said, it didn't affect my faith. He said, I grew up in a little small church called Selwyn Outreach Center, and I seen the power of God move. I seen miracles. I seen limbs grow. And in a second, the Lord spoke to me. You know what church you need to go to. You know. So this testimony has been given so many times. Shelly's sister gave it. You can feel the love of God when you walk in this place. You feel the love of people when you walk in this place. You feel the spirit when you walk in this place. Sherry gave it. Last week when Darren got baptized, he gave it. And I can attest to the same feeling. From the moment I walked in that door, I could feel the love of God. And the love of the people in here and the spirit of God move. A little while later, Gord asked me to go out for a coffee. So he said, Ron, what brought you to Selwyn? And I gave him the story. And he said, well, yeah, that's my son and Pastor Linda's son. That's our son, Shannon. And I'm like, Lord, Al, you direct our steps. Amen. Thank you. You know, seeds planted in this church 10, 20, 30 years ago are still bearing fruit. I'm an example of it. So I thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I came here not for healing, but when I walked in the door, I was in rough shape. I didn't sit for eight months. I was on injections up at the hospital every two months. I was taking ibuprofen and Tylenol like candy every two hours just to move. One day we had a prayer teams down here. And I walked down and Jess said, what would you like prayer for? I said, many things, but the most important thing is my back. I, I'm struggling. And I can tell you to, from that day to this, I have not had one injection. <laughs> not one pill. The Lord has totally healed my back with no reservations. I do what I do with no reservations. I got up last year when the wind storm to the top of a 40-foot pine tree. I climbed the tree with knowing that I didn't have to worry about if my back was going to hurt the next day or if I was going to have any pain, knowing that my healing was complete. The last thing I'd like to tell you, this is not just a church. And if I can contain this part, it would be good. <laughs> This is not just a church to me. You know the feeling you get when you go on vacation and you come home, you put your bags down and you just go, ah, it's so good to be home. That's the feeling I get every time I walk in the door. Every time I walk in the door, I'm home. Thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you, my Selwyn family.